sense of like the amount of pain and suffering she's been through she can now like judge others and condemn others because she's above them i don't know if that's <laughs> like she's calling them like a bug and we all know that the whole thing with the, the mottos is like the insects and bugs and shit ugh we're on to the next day huh oh great we're going through an lsd trip Light that destroys my eyes, the strong headwind pushes my mind and body away from the entrance. The light is too strong for me to perceive what it is. My body exposed to the wind is rusting with each passing second. How long will I stay here? An infinity that is not even a second, and an instant close to eternity. With no sense of time, years change to seconds. Therefore, my body is eternally exposed to the wind, polished and clouded like a mirror and crumbling apart. Go forward. This place is painful. A zero gravity without any handhold. An airless vacuum. The world of wind erosion is not a place on one, one can stay in human form. That's why I remove- that's why I move forward. My volume doubles with each step I take and it gets harder to breathe. One step. Two steps. The third step is impossible. I can't go any farther. The wind gets stronger the more I advance, tearing at my body. But I have to move forward if I want to escape. The wind is coming from the other side of the, of the light. The light is the entrance and the exit. This place hurts. So I have to quickly get to the other side. A stronger wind is there once I pass the entrance. Once past the exit, this pain would become lighter. This has to do with, like, his arm getting adapted to his body and, like, the information of Emiya's abilities, like, storing into him. I reach out my hand. I reach out with all my might. The light is in front of me, but I can't reach it. The polar light destroys my eyes. I can't reach it no matter what. It hurts. I can't reach it even if I cough up blood and reach out. Why? It's only a meter away. So why? Why does it feel like I'm trying to head to the distant polar lights? And we wake up. Oh, hi, Elia. Thank you for waking us up from that. <laughs> I wake up. Oh, wow. He was, like, kind of doing it in his sleep. Yikes. I blankly stared at Ilya standing before me. Oh, that's so cute! That's so fucking wholesome! Did she just wink at you? Ilya! <laughs> Man, since she woke up before me and came here. I don't care about that, but maybe Ilya did so because... Oh, hi, train. Yep. I now notice that my right hand is on the cloth, covering my left arm. Oh man. Ilya hadn't come, I might have taken it off in my sleep. Oh my god, my heart. It's melting. Sing Ilya and Shiro this close to each other. Oh my god, it's just so sweet. Her smile captivates me. I know Ilya's just saying that out of kindness, but... Well, thank you, Ilya. I slammed the brakes on my panicking heart. Oh. We can't exactly explain that. 
You may be 18, but we ain't going that far. <laughs> it's really dangerous. Bruh. <laughs> you ain't innocent anymore, boy. Oh no. Sure, how are you gonna we how how are you gonna weasel your way through this? The silver-haired girl puts her hand down, gets on all fours, and... Stop! Stop! <laughs> you can't do this! Why are you being... Oh my god. I roll backward, head over heels, while keeping a hold of my futon. That was close. I has experienced a certain physiological phenomenon every morning. I could be given a man's mark of shame if she comes close to me in such an outfit. I hit the back of my head hard. <laughs> Make up an excuse. It hurts. I saw stars and my head is throbbing, but I can't be whining if I hear a voice like that. <laughs> ah, comedy. It's gonna go away soon. I shake my head and get up. My morning issue has calmed down thanks to that. Oh, yeah, she's never known that. Oh, my heart. My heart. That is. That is the cutest Ilya sprite of all. She's so adorable. Ilya's face lights up. It seems the fact that I can cook is a delightful thing for Ilya. イリアが起きてるなら今に行ってもらった方がいいし。本当行く行く。白のエプロン姿見たい。そっか。じゃあ、3人で協力して、トーサが追いつけよう。お。今朝はサクラと一緒に作る約束だったから、イリアが入れば
Ilya, because she's the Grail, absorbed Emiya. So, she got that knowledge, is what everyone has told me. So, she, yeah, she knows that Emiya is, is Shiro, and so that's why she's giving us this useful advice that... It's weird how Ilya goes from like little girl to just like a machine almost. I mean, she is a homunculus, but it's kind of like that switch between the two. So it looks like she's saying that eventually Shira will get this magic. I guess it's just still adjusting to us, to our, um, to the body. I repeat Ilya's word absentmindedly at that instant. <laughs> the cocking hammer goes down. The dream I saw while I was treated. I vaguely understand what it is and what it means. It's probably projection taken to the utmost limit, reproducing every weapon you've ever seen and making them your own. So yeah. I will be so freaking hyped if Shiro says I am the bone of my sword and does the the the, the, the incantation. Yeah, they're really laying it on thick. Oh, fuck. Oh. Damn, those abandonment issues really be pouring through with that. I'm so sorry, Leah. Ilya leaves. Her warning contains both caring strictness and murderous hostility. ああ。<笑> really really just want to punch my own hand because i just keep clicking on accident なるほど。咲いてますね、先輩。are you gonna use one hand for the knife? I don't think that's a good idea. One arm, I mean. A sushi sh Oh, that's cute. Uh, yeah. Sakura goes to the refrigerator. Sakura must be feeling better after a good night's sleep because she's in a good mood this morning. And standing in the kitchen with her is fun for me too. Sakura is thoughtful and is attentive to my needs, preparing things ahead of time. It feels really good to cook with someone like that. That's adorable. I sigh so she can't see and continue cutting the sardine. Sardine is soft, so it's better to use fingers than a knife. It's something even I, one with my left arm not moving, can manage to cook. けど、先輩いつの間にそんな技を覚えたんですか握手だけでお魚を捌くなんてかなり普通じゃないです。技じゃない。これはタイミングと気合の問題。その気になればさくらだってできる。そんなものですか。そんなもんだよ。技っていう
I mean, it is true that butchers actually have technique in terms of how they do the certain beef, beef cut, the beef, beef cuts. But what? Hey, they move away from the cutting board and walk to the gas burner. I put the frying pan over the fire and pour some oil onto it. My body knows how to do this, so I do it absentmindedly. Dude, somebody should uh, get a compilation for every time Sakura says Senpai in the VN. I can only imagine it being like, what, 683 times? Maybe more, maybe less, we'll see. I vaguely reply. Yeah, there's some weird energy between the two now. Kind of? Not hor horrible, just... You know... Issues. <laughs> my hand stops. But it's only for an instant. I'm sure Sankar didn't see my disturbance. There is truth to that. I just discovered a spider bite on my forehead. The itch is really bad. That's unfortunate. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course she'd be interested in whether it's dangerous for him or not. Kind of, I guess. I. She kind of guessed right in the sense that <sighs> it's complicated. Yeah. 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 I wonder if Ilya ever had her own desire for the Grail, what that would be. That gold disappeared long before the war even started. Oh, to kill Kiritsugu? I guess that could be it. Ilya's goal, I mean Kiritsugu, the one she wanted to meet, died five years ago. Then what can I do, and what should I do in his place? Nah, Sakura. If Ilya <laughs> oh my lord, that's adorable. She was like acting like she's the wife of the house, like, I need to consult you first before making this decision. <gasps> that's adorable! Oh my god! My, my heart just, my heart is beating for her. <laughs> she still can't believe it. Neither Ilya nor Chisaka can help me with cooking this perfectly. I take the sardine soccer prepared. Sucker hands you the sardine with an airy motion. Oh, my heart. My heart. Oh, my God. This this day has been mostly wholesome, and it's filling me with joy. Eh? What is it all of a sudden? Did she get a fever again? In an alternate universe, they could be a happy family. <laughs> I don't see the ending of this around allowing any happiness for anybody. Maybe she's just wary because she knows that Sakura was going to eventually hurt Shiro or something. I'll be really happy if that happens. After the Holy Grail War is over, Sakura and Ilya will be here making breakfast without work. Oh, don't say that. I want that so bad. I'll pay any price for... Stop it, game! Stop foreshadowing that shit! I'll pay any price for such a thing to come true. Hello. It's early in the morning, both of you. 
I actually agree with Tosaka because I couldn't imagine waking up at six every day. That would just be that would take like a few months for my clock to just get used to, to be honest. Wait, something amazing just passed by. <laughs> this is I love how the music stopped and resumed there. Oh. <laughs> nope, nobody passed by at all. Let's just continue cooking. We timidly look into the living room. The person that st shambled over to the table glo glowers at as she pours herself some tea and turns on the TV. Yeah. Wait, Sakura, doesn't someone who's not a morning person, um, look cuter? <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, she looks like death in the morning. You either look cute as a sleepy head, or you look fucking just dead. Breakfast starts. Sakura and I sit next to each other while Tosaka and Ilya sit across from us. That is some noble superiority coming from you. I don't know if Ilya is attacking or praising Sakura. Me neither, Rin. Tosaka complains as she eats the omelet. And for some reason, she silently starts concentrating on eating because it tastes so good. Breakfast continues quietly. The only loud thing is the TV Tosaka turned on, offering many topics of information. A familiar- uh Breaking news! A bunch of dead bodies! Blood and guts everywhere! A familiar scene is on the TV. I can't be- I can't be mistaken. The TV is showing a baffling story about a park in Shinto. It's a pretty vivid incident. An old man was jogging in the park, found a trace of blood, and reported it to the police. A policeman came to the scene and found what appeared to be one person's worth of blood and pieces of the apparent victims. But it seems the pieces are just scraps of flesh and don't even weigh 50 kilograms when gathered together. That, that thing devoured almost every bit of them. Only 50 kilograms of m That's tiny! <laughs> That's what's scary about it. それは体の一部ってのが4人分あったんでしょ。うん。本当に一部しか残ってなかっただろうけど。It's a good theory that we we know that Zoken's eaten somebody before, but um unfortunately. さあね。造形の仕業かどうかはわからない。これはあの影がやったと見て間違いない。あの影がなんであれ今まではこんなことしてなかっただろう。あれは町の人たちから魔力を吸い上げた。Directly kill people like this. そうね。考えられる理由があるとしたら、敵がいなくなったからでしょう。もう正面からあいつらを倒せるマスターはいない。それは、見境がなくなってるってことか。I don't know if it really was indiscriminate in this case. さ、自分で言っておいてなんだけど、私にはそうは見えない。仮に造剣があの影と関係があるのなら。I'll bet my omelet. <laughs> Osaka's omelet is gone as she speaks. Her hawk like eyes are looking at the only untouched omelet on the table, mine. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, 
<laughs> she, she's staring at it. <laughs> That's adorable, though. They may be... Could they have tested the blood and seen that it come from, di the, from different people? I'm not gonna say what thought of what that could be. So maybe one could be a right earlobe, another could be a finger from a left hand. I, I, I don't fucking know. Pasaka states simply, I imagine the scene in my appetite quickly goes away. Here, go here, have my omelet. After breakfast. Shiro, Bow, now. Tosaka takes me to the dojo. I had no reason to refuse, and I also wanted to talk to Tosaka, so it wasn't a, a timely offer. It was, but. Is it Ilya? Tosaka's unhappy that they're unexpected guests. Okay, it's both. You're menacing! She's just standing there. Menacingly! It's the shadow at night. <laughs> the shadow. Taking out the trash, taking out the trash. At night. That's <laughs> She, she, she ain't watching, she ain't gonna watch Miss, Miss Steelio Man. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, damn straight. That's beautiful. She must have prepared it before breakfast as Tosaka's bag is at the dojo. It's full of it's full of equipment, like what I saw at her house, and it's easy to guess what'll happen, but Yeah, the other two nod. I love it. I love how comedic this is. Just, I have two reliable supporters this time. Oh, Tosaka's sulking, unhappy with the three-on-one situation. どんな指示だろうと、当坂の言葉なら信じる。うん。じゃあ、なんで待ったなんて書けるのよ。疑問がないなら大人しく言うこと聞きなさいよね。いや、その話じゃない。俺が確認しておきたいのは今後の方針だ
私たちではおじいさまには勝てないと思いますもう勝敗は決まったようなものですからここでおとなしくしていればおじいさまも手出しはしてこないはずですし So Sokka doesn't say anything. I don't know what she's thinking, but I want to believe she has the same opinion as me, since she's not agreeing with Ilya or Sakura. That's right. Sakura doesn't say anything. Sakura doesn't say anything. Sakura doesn't say anything. Tosaka doesn't interrupt. It means she intended for the two of us to fight Zoken, no matter what our true opinion may be. Zoken mo hot tokenai ga. Sore i jou ni ano kage wa hot tokenai. Ore to Tosaka wa konya kara machi ni deru koto ni naru daro kara. Sakura to Iria wa koko de kiyoku batte ite kure. I confirmed the plan with everyone. Then. Remember what Ryder said, Shiro. Dang, it's weird to see Ilya shook. Ah, uh, this is just... This drama is so hard to sit through, because you can see both sides. Oh, this is just, this is difficult. Problem is I'm going to assume that she's probably getting dark thoughts again about Shiro getting hurt more so that he can actually stop fighting. Sakura. Sakura's trembling. She's hanging her head as she trembles at her words. I don't know why she's trembling. The only thing I can do is to answer her question. That's right. It's a selfish wish I'd, I had ever since I decided to be Sakura's ally and not everyone else's. That's Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Oh, dude. I'm getting really just... They, they keep, like, putting... Piling it on the, the... The fact that, like... The whole Shiro needs to come back to her and... Yeah, her worry... It, it's really worrying me. Sakura looks down painfully. It looks like she's apologizing. Hi, hi. そこまでにしてもらえる報酬は決まったんだから今更どうこう言っても仕方がないでしょう桜とイリアはここ出る巣番私とシロはとりあえず夜の街を巡回する造券たちを見つけても安易に仕掛けないで勝算がある場合のみ
その活動は大幅に抑えたはずよ、うん、だから神事の時みたいに直接何かをされない限り刻印中の暴走はないの Maybe for just a little bit Like I'm not sure how many days until it would 逆に言えばあなたがこの屋敷にとどまっている限り造剣は最後の一人にはなれない遅かれ早かれあいつは桜を奪いに来るんだから戦わないなんて選択肢はないのよ。Sock is making very, very, very good points. おとなしくしているようなんてよく言えたものね。Agreeing with her right now, actually. それは、そうですけど。おじいさまだって、私たちが何もしなければ。I'm sorry, Sakura. He's definitely manipulated you into believing he's not all bad, but he's gonna do anything in his. In, Anything he can possibly do to get that immortality. Sakura, you can get some of the Kanga Yamenasai. Zoke, Anta, no Sofu de Monakereba, Sidemonai. Are that Kido Casaner Yatso, Mada Ningen that to Moterno? He Oji Samaka Hitanate. Damn, that's the cold truth right there. Nara, Anata Mokako, Kimenasai. わたしとシローが外で戦うように、あなたもここで戦わなくちゃいけないんだから。もし造剣がここを襲ったとき、あなたは何としても逃げ延びること。ライダーさえ倒されなければ、聖杯は完成しない。ライダーが生きている限りは
the way that the wind just blowed in like that is some ominous wind. Um, Sakura's stare is more painful now. Uh, are we going to get this explanation again? It's UBW again! ここで簡単に魔術回路のオンオフができるようになったら、いや、basically。It's <laughs> natural that I'm acting strange and can't breathe. I'm naked from the waist up, and Tosaka is near me. It'd be more strange not to be nervous. ちょっと落ち着きないけどちゃんと聞いてるの？ That's a loud ass truck outside. My apologies. Oh, interesting. That's why the belly button and throat, though. Like I'm just being ignorant, but that's interesting. Good. That's that's actually going to be very helpful. Thank you, Tosaka. Then Tosaka placed her hand on my chest. I barely stopped myself from jumping back. Tosaka's hand is soft and her touch sends a shudder through my heart. Every time her slender fingers run across my chest, my temperature rises by a degree. Ouch. Ow. Oh, that's weird. Like, it's not her fault that it's weird. I'm just saying, man, that'd be... Oh my god, I couldn't imagine having someone just put their finger in my belly button. Pain. My body convulses. My stomach. Having Tosaka's hand on my stomach is bad enough, but something rigid tears through my skin and into my body. My face is going to get redder if you say something like that, you idiot! I love how Sakura gets mad too. The shoulder should be fine enough, but the throat. Kinky. I would really love to run away right now. I would love to, but doing so would seem like I'm conscious of Tosaka and I won't be able to excuse myself. <laughs> Sakura. It's embarrassing, so I look away from Tosaka. It's not just my face that's blushing, I think my entire body's turning red. I'm blushing even though I know this is only for magic, so I bet Tosaka's having a hard time too. Man, how can I ever face Tosaka again after committing such a disgrace? Tosaka grabs something that looks like a first aid kit and goes to the corner of the dojo where her bag is. My face is still red, but I'm finally able to calm down and take a deep breath. Then... Sakura twiddles her fingers, looking like she wants to say something. She takes a look at me, then she takes a breath as if preparing herself. Yes, you did. Hopefully Tosaka didn't hear that. I, I think I think having her hear that would be kind of awkward, but yeah. She asks me a ridiculous question. My face, which had finally calmed down, passes its boiling point and turns red again. I feel dizzy. 
Just recalling what happened that night is so stimulating that it makes me forget about our current situation. So for Sakura to ask me for confirmation like this when I'm already off balance from Tosaka, it's like getting hit twice as hard. No, this isn't the time to be speechless. Dude, I'm so glad that they're they're phrasing it the way that I want them to phrase it in the wholesome way. It makes my heart so giddy. It's so so sweet. Right, I just can't understand why she's so frustrated. It's unfortunately. I mean, most of the audience is, is men anyway. Y'all understand, dude. It does. You can be head over heels for your woman, and you would never cheat. But if if another woman touches your body like that, you're gonna get a little freaking heated up, and you're gonna be like, "Oh my god, get away from me, please!" I finally realized why her stare was so painful earlier. It's because she was sulking. <laughs> Oh. My heart grew three times today. It has blossomed into a large, bigger organ. I'm afraid it's going to explode any moments now. That was so... So sweet. Couldn't fight against it. I'm a guy, and I've admired Tosaka since I got into the school, so I couldn't help it. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Shit! Sher, you gotta, you gotta really put it in, into gear, homie. Repentant from the bottom of my heart, I tell her I'll do my best. Man, I only realized it just now, but having three girls under the same roof might be a really stressful thing. You think? Especially when they all fucking love you, dude. It's 11.30 now. With lunch coming up, the kitchen is filled with a noisy, forbidding... atmosphere. In the kitchen, with the refrigerator at her back, Sakura speaks timidly. In response... Wow, that's a new sprite. Mapo Tofu! <laughs> the priest smiles. <laughs> Can I come over? No! Get the f But I saved you like three times. <laughs> also, that apron is actually really cute, dude. Why can't, like, I mean, honestly, Sakura's apron is cuter, but still, it's a cute apron. Tosaka cuts her off and selfishly starts cutting the tofu. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying to get everyone to be nice to each other. Ilya sits Japanese style on the cushion and speaks without reserve. Hmm, it seems even Ilya can tell Tosaka and Sakura are tense. I would say. Well, you see. I don't know. It kind of happened. Yep. <laughs> nice. I gotta say, I'm enjoying the slice of life elements, but I gotta say that I'm not sure how much we've got left, man. Like, I don't know how they're gonna keep the slice of life elements up for the rest of this route when, um,. Well, I think coming up, it's gonna be just non-stop fighting, really. Hiromeshu,どうしようって話になってな。父さんは自分が作る。お桜はそれは自分の仕事だって言い張ったんだ。ずいぶん話し合ったけど、二人とも引かないから、じゃあ間を取って一緒に飯を作ればいいだろうって
シロウがそう言っちゃったのうんそうそれじゃ引き下がれないわよね二人とも<笑> Julia seems to understand it takes a sip of tea with proper manners. As expected from a princess, she should know the proper she should know the proper etiquette, but she's elegant even with something as simple as this. He doesn't exactly like cooking, just does it. She's making the, uh, the good point there, though. She's making the good point there, though. Kind of. Well, I guess so, but you're re they're like blood related. It's, it's kind of similar because they were not really siblings, but, but then it was revealed that they were, and then it's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> But she's taking her Sundari energy and timesing it like to the max, like the ultimate Sundari. Yeah, basically. I nod. I don't know about Tosaka, but I know how Sakura feels. Sakura likes Tosaka, and she wants Tosaka to like her, or she would never call her Nason. <laughs> Pressed, Ilya murmurs and looks in the kitchen. I follow her example and look in the kitchen. It must be half done with the cooking. Standing side by side in the small kitchen, Tosaka and Sakura are making their dishes. One holds the frying pan while the other holds the ladle, but neither says anything. And after a silence that even gets us nervous. Oh, that's timing. As expected from sisters, they start talking at the same time. Look how happy she is. <laughs> happy Sakura is just a blessing. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, fortunately, it's not going to last forever. Maybe it can get back to that after the route ends, maybe? If they're. Uh... It's scary that I can't deny the possibility. Osaka is normally dominant, but why is she so shy when it comes to Sakura? And Sakura, too! She calls Tosaka Nesan when she's with me, but she's reserved when she's actually with her. Osaka. ちょっと話があるこっちに来てくれ先輩外に何かあるんですかいや外は関係ないちょっとした内緒話がしたかっただけだああ内緒話
Yep, it's exactly that, Nason. You said it. Precisely. だから遠坂の呼び方、桜遠坂の前だとねえさんって言わないだろ。本当はそう呼びたいくせに無理してるってバレバレだぞ。え、あのバレバレってねえさんにですか？いや。Whoa, I just made that up, but it seems Sakura's more reserved about her sister's feelings than I thought. Oh, she doesn't? Oh, duh, she's dense when it comes to Sakura. Oh, I don't know if she's dense when it comes to Sakura. Oh, that's sad. No, don't say it like that. Oh, that's sad. なら、素直にそう言えばいいじゃないか。鈍感な遠さかでも、桜が面と向かって言えば気がつく。そうすれば桜だって。Sakura should be able to realize by herself that Asaka wants to get along with Sakura. あの、先輩。いや、ともかく、遠さかに姉さんって言ってみろ。それだけであいつきっと面白いぐらい共演するから。そうでしょうか。遠さか先輩。there's a good chance that it could turn out horribly. That's the problem. No, I don't think that part's true. Yep. それ以上に確かな関係なんてない。俺が保証する。Hey, you love each other. No need。ちょっと焼けるぐらい。You seem to stop being dense yourself, Shiro, and start getting into more romantic situations. そうなんですか。そうだよ。だからちゃんとねえさんって呼ぶこと。Ah, it's so Amazing to see Shiro help out with these little problems, just building out the confidence in, in people. I don't know what's going on in her mind, but after putting her hands together as if praying and thinking it over. We return to the living room. Sakura exchanges a glance with me, takes a deep breath, and heads to the kitchen. <laughs> ah, it's just. I don't know why I'm having. I'm entertained so much just by Ilya being here too. Yeah. It's not going to go well. I've got a bad feeling. I sit down on the cushion. Maybe no The music's wholesome, maybe it'll be fine. Everything goes still. They both fall silent, and the tension is much greater than before. Not even breathing, they stare at one another. <laughs> Yay, it's wholesome. It's happy. Shame on me for thinking everything is going to go wrong. <laughs> I 
私だってサクラって呼び捨てにしてるし。Yeah, fair enough. 先輩って呼び方が二人もいると混乱するし、そっちの方がわかりやすいんじゃない She's so happy! Sokka makes it sound like it can't be helped and looks away. But Sokka should be able to tell that she's blushing and can't hide her smile. Their joint work got even more awkward after that. They messed up so many times that lunch turned out to be a disaster. That fried chicken was covered in pepper, the mapo, tufu, mapo tofu was hot as hell, and the rice cooker was never turned on, so we ended up eating without rice. But Tozaka and Sakura both looked happy, smiling at every opportunity. Especially together. Ilya sounds dumbfounded as she eats mapo tofu that's hot enough to numb your tongue. <laughs> I nod back and gratefully eat the food they made. All right, we do be continuing the fates. Y'all are gonna notice a weird cut there, but that's because I'm in a new recording session. So woo, let's continue. I returned to my room to rest after lunch. Tosaka had something to do, so she went to her room with Ilya. Ilya, no, the o carite, zoken taisa ko suru no. Kokuin ga najimu no ni mo jikan ga kakaru daro si. Gogo wa yasun de ite i wa. Okay, um, I don't know what we're gonna do this afternoon. We could spend time with Sakura, we could have an episode, you know. Ouch. You be blunt and correct. But it do hurt a little bit. That's how it is, according to her. We have no way to oppose Zoken right now, so all I can do is to wait for whatever Tosaka's preparing. Sakura has returned to her room. Sakura was feeling dizzy while we were cleaning up after lunch. I wasn't worried because she seemed well this morning, but Sakura's no different from a sick person. So Sakura and I told her to rest if she's feeling even a bit tired, so Sakura's back in her room now. One thing I always hated is like, you know when you're sick and you always have that like one part of the day where you're actually feeling pretty decent? So then like your parents or like a teacher or whatever will say that you, you aren't sick? And you're like, the fuck mate? Yeah, I yeah. am. I check out how my arm's doing. I didn't, it didn't move at all before, but I can manage to move my elbow now. It's still numb, but I feel no pain. If I'm to talk about pain. Yawning mid-sentence is pain, Shiro. The crest Tosaka planted hurts more. My shoulder, throat, and belly button. It feels like bolts are in those areas, as if I'm Frankenstein. <laughs> He really is just this... Oh lord, what else is gonna happen to his body? It reminds me of cyborgs when we see in science fiction movies. It's an interesting idea, but I can't laugh it off. I was going to check how many arms... how my arm's doing, but I didn't even stand in front of, of, of the mirror. It's almost two o'clock, well... Oh, that's a lot of choices, dude. I feel like I kinda wanna do all of them for fun. S wholesome. I'm gonna assume this is all gonna be wholesome, so. Dude, we going after <laughs> Ryder. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Ryder all day. I just, dude, come on. Ryder is awesome? I wanna see how she's doing. Con considering her, I'm, ch I'm sure she's keeping watch on Sakura from a distance, but I have to greet her if she's around. Ryder is nowhere in the house. There's her room, but it didn't even look like it had been used. In a place where she may like, and where Sakura's room is in view. The shed. This is the only place I can think of. The shed is the only spot that has a good view of Sakura's room. It's concealed and it's unoccupied. I call out to the empty shed. It's so like, it's just I love how she just appears like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ryder must have been in spirit form as she suddenly appears. Well, I came to greet her, but I get tense when I actually stand face to face with her. I don't care about Ryder's personality to keep everyone distant from her, but as a guy, her overexposing outfit is troublesome. Yeah. No? 
Not usually. Her response is direct, but this is within my expectations. This is actually easier for me to handle because this is what I expected from Ryder. Yeah. I sigh with relief. I was worried, but it seems Sakura isn't pushing herself. I wave and head for the yard. Yeah, this conversation wasn't going to be that short. I stop in front of the door. Every question writers asked of us has been interesting. Oh, right, because he was like, I'm glad to hear you say that. I'm just thinking a little bit about that line. I don't have a problem with it, more so that I just, uh... Kind of iffy. Like, I, I don't think it's bad line or anything. I was just thinking from a personal perspective if I agree with it or not. I don't... I'm kind of iffy. Oh, you, uh, you're good at catching his bluff. He just wants... He doesn't want to be seen as pathetic as he really is in terms of combat ability. You know, that's a good point. There is a, um, the alternative of bluffing too much that you end up screwing yourself over, but, you know, there's a balance. なるほど。確かに私が動けば、桜が苦しむ。こうして実体化するだけでも桜に負担をかける以上。Basically. Red flag. Red flag! Every time I play this game, man. God, if they do. Uh, I don't want Shiro to die. Ooh, how do you th burden, you say? Kinda? But I don't know. I feel like if Sakura wanted it, she would. Ryder doesn't answer. Her blindfolded eyes just stare directly at me. <laughs> From a logical point of view, uh, your, your point is very fair. But I'm troubled now. That means it's better to take Ilya to a safer place. She doesn't want to go to the church, but leaving her alone in her castle is even more. Oh, man. No. Oh. Interesting. So... I wonder if this is the choice that makes sense the most, then. This seems really, uh... It is. Yes, yeah, you're correct. This seems really important. Her smile, man. 
あなたが先に私を助けてくれたのです。ああ、wholesome! I'm happy! I'm stunned! I'm, I'm glad that Ryder accepted my proposal, but more than that. No! いいえ。喜ばしいことはありませんでした。<笑>エミを浮かべる通りはない。I love that. I love it so much. That's so sweet and adorable. I love it so much. That's so sweet and adorable. Just put your Shiro against the shed. Never tell anyone again. Shiro's just like, harder? She's like, what? Shiro's like, what? <laughs> Soccer just feels great disturbance. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I she would never smile ever, ever. Ne ne never, ever. Ryder declares. Hmm, now that she mentions it, maybe she's right. Hmm, the air is getting strangely tense now. I was gonna go back to the main building, but I'm concerned about Ryder. She's silent and cold like always, but it seems like she has something she wants to say. The air gets tense as if we're facing off, but I know this is abrupt, but Ryder's tall. Long hair, slender limbs. I've only seen it once, but her face under the mask was beautiful. Sock and Sakura are beautiful too, but Ryder has an entirely different sort of beauty. And she's got that mature woman beauty of just like a fully grown, mature ass woman. You're gonna make this weird, Shiro? You're gonna make this weird, aren't you? I ask her straight out. Wait, why is she backing up? Does that have to do with her lore somehow? I don't know. Oh, is she self conscious about her height? That might make sense because given the time, she would have been a giant comparative to other people. Um, because of how much height has. The height average has just completely jumped and spiked over the last few hundred years. Goodness gracious. Her, vo her voice is so adorable when she's all <laughs> like this. Ryder's so obviously disturbed. That usually cool writer is flustered, so could it mean that. Yeah. You've done it, Shiro. Get out. You're about to get fucking destroyed. She's gonna whoop your ass. Ryder freezes. It seems like that's right. We both shut our mouths. She must not be able to bear the silence. I think this is um actually a common thing. Um, not as common as I think um some other things are, but I think a lot of women that are taller are definitely self-conscious about it. I I've heard it in a lot of cases. Um. Just, just listening to people talk at school, I've heard those insecurities come out, and um, at work too, I've I've heard conversations about that kind of stuff. So it isn't really strange at all. I think more commonly is men worrying about their height because society is a big old jerk face and deems that height is like one of the most important traits of a human being for some reason. So I know canonically Shiro does get taller, but but my man is saving the world at a fucking he's like what five four or something like that? Five five? The Shiro is, is a badass short motherfucker. Like he's it's jacked as shit. Freaking destroying Gilgamesh. This man gets it. This man fucks. <laughs> Oh, that's so sad. Oh, gosh. No, you're beautiful. 
Shiro just like gave her the biggest like brain explosion. Actually, she's asking too much. I want her height, really. And silence again. It's finally, it finally occurs to me that I could be distancing her from guard duty. Damn, I really wanted that height reveal. Say it, please. 175 centimeters. Say it. She stops me and I turn around for a second time. Ryder bites her lip in annoyance then. Oh. She cares so much about Sakura. It just it makes my it warms my heart so much. Right is right. Sakura's room is near here, so I'll take care of her this afternoon. So I wonder if the Sakura choice is mandatory. And uh, these choices are just extra fluff before he goes to check on Sakura? You're so freaking silly, Shiro, but that's that's really sweet. Good, good. It'd just be stupid if I forgot to greet her, which this is the whole reason I came here. Then. Yes, height reveal. Ryder regains her composure and looks down at me coldly. Oh. Damn, she just completely roasted our ass. Like, yeah, you're correct, but that's just how Shiro is, dude. I really wanted her height. Yeah, I was wondering why she put it like that. That she was definitely insecure, feeling like that's what she was to Shiro, but Shiro's just like a nice person, you know? The smile! Oh my god, yes! They're getting so close, it's... Uh, uh, bad things are gonna come. I'm not mistaken, she's really smiling. Yay! Okay, hopefully we got her height in hollow. <laughs> I knock quietly. Okay, really quick, I'm gonna make a separate save. I'm gonna go pick the other choices, because I want to see what happens. Um, rider choice. Done. I'm just curious. I really want to see the Ilya one. I'll go see how Tosaka and Ilya are doing. I'm curious about what they're up to, and there might be something I can help with. Glasses. Oh. <laughs> Damn, I know you told us that, but... Ouch! Also, take those glasses off, you freaking nerd! What the heck's wrong with you, Dosaka? <laughs> Imagine not being able to see. <laughs> One second after I knock, she kicks me out without time for a rebuttal. You serious? Like, yeah, I mean, it makes but okay. I mean, I know you told us you're gonna go make some cool ass weapons that you two could only make together. I see, when she puts it that way, I see her point. There are, these, there are things I can't tell her even if we're cooperating. Anyway. A little. Just a little bit. Her honor student style is upgraded and she looks like some president now. Actually, yeah. 
She does look good in glasses, I'll admit. It just looks so different. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, Shira, stop! You just ruined everything, you're gonna get your ass smacked. Hmm, did the room suddenly get cold? I ask her with my eyes if it's just my imagination. Oh, they're both cold. Yeah, man. We're both chilling. Oh. I don't want to lose more of my limbs, Tosaka. <sighs> Scary. She's serious. It seems she really wants to punish me for walking around when she told me to rest and save up my energy. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta go check on Sakura. Are we really not gonna see Ilya in this cutscene? Oh, Ilya. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go check on Sakura. It's interesting seeing Rin be so serious and like genuine like that. Because we never ever see her drop her composure like at all. Like little bits and pieces. My face burns up. It's really embarrassing to have someone else say that. I wanted to talk to I wanted Ilya to show up. And not awkwardly like a robot. <laughs> she shuts the door. Sakura's room is right next door, not even a meter away. So do they all lead? Do they all lead to this? I take a deep breath and glare at the door of the next room. It's not like I have a guilty conscience. I'm just going to check if Sakura's really resting or not. Is it going to be the same? Sakura, Iruka. Yeah. And I'm gonna assume um, that if we pick that. Is there a little bit of a difference? Sakura, Iruka. Oh, no, it's the same. Cool. Then I honestly, the writer choice feels like the most natural one to have picked. So, that's good. Did the writer one give me any points for Sakura? Oh, I don't think we've ever seen a bar get maxed out. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, tw 14 points. We got five Ilya points, five red points, and one saber point. Oops. <laughs> Having soccer's bar max makes me makes my heart happy, though. You know, I love the, 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 the gag that these three were supposed to have their own routes. Where's the fucking Issei route, man? Need that. I hear a sluggish voice. Nah, you don't need to. She must have been sleeping and now she's scrambling to meet, meet me. Okay, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> I suddenly get nervous that I'm about to enter a girl's room. I've been here before, but the situation is different. Sakura wasn't conscious back then, but now she's opening the door and, I'm, and inviting me in. <laughs> now we just love you, because you're the best and most wholesomest- Ah! Must protect, man! <laughs> It seems I woke her up as a result. Sakura's going to want to reward Shiro. You better run. Sakura's going to want to reward Shiro. 
熱があるのに無理して動き回ることなんてないんだなんか俺が過保護すぎたみたいだ Why does that line kind of get me some sus? Like, it's sus to me. Because that shadow apparently had the figure of a woman. You wouldn't push yourself and move around if you're sick. Uh, Nasu, if you really dropping them hints, I see you. If I'm wrong, then damn, I'm just a huge dumbass. <laughs> I contemplate my actions, but Sakura starts laughing. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad that we came then. けど。そうしたら姉さんがふざけるなって怒るんです。無理をして倒れたら、私たちに迷惑がかかるって。Oh, harsh. She's, she's right, but a little harsh. That's right. We stopped Sakura from doing the laundry after lunch. She wouldn't listen to me, but when I was wondering how to convince her, Josaka came to help. But it wasn't anything nice. If you collapse, we'll have to kill you. As her harsh words would indicate, Jesus. So that's right. Wow, she's actually happy about that. I guess she's never ever got to experience like normal um familial bonds like that from a sibling. Like, oh, that's honestly cute. Sakura sounds happy. I see. She knows that Tosaka cares about her no matter what she said. Plus, there's that little fact. さくらが。いや、ああ。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、ウッピーナイス。だ、
<laughs> Damn, dude, Chiro's gonna be consumed by the horny. My man needs to go touch some grass. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord have mercy, Shiro, jeez. I mean, you could just, like, hug her first, my guy. And to be fair, I'm pretty sure Sakura wouldn't mind anything that you do. Because she loves you, my guy. No! Uh, to be real though, like I'm not, pi I'm gonna probably piss off the Rin and Ilya stands, but to me, Sakura is the most attractive. So, checkmate. Boom. Well, that's something else. Usually, it's the other way around. Huh? I never really thought that that was. I mean, I can understand that they're massive, but they're just, like, regularly big. Do some women really have that insecurity with the bigger ones? Like, I'm sure if they're, like, just fucking massive, sure, but... I mean, I suppose there's some insecurities for everything and for multitudes of reasons. I've just never heard of that before, really. It's always about, like, the smaller ones. But, dude, all boobs are good. Never question that. If you disagree, then I'm gonna have to smoke your ass. Take a deep breath and calm myself down. I can't push her down when she's not feeling well. Wait, have sex with her will help her. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it gives magical energy, don't it? Oh, we're going in. <laughs> oh. And it's not bad. It's not bad, but. That's right. Tosaka's next door, first of all. That's what makes it bad. <laughs> They'll notice right away if I do such a thing, so I'm sure they'll look down on me for doing it so early in the day. You, you dumbass. When you get too consumed by the horny, you can't even listen to your basic, your basically girlfriend at this point vent to you. Realizing that Sakura's unhappy, I come back to the real world. Yeah, it's like, you haven't denied what she said, it's gonna make her feel like garbage. I was thinking about very suggestive things the whole time! Sort of. Yeah, in a way. No. Oh. Can't even vent. Gerald, you fucker. I love you, but come on. <laughs> That's right. I was asking Sakura about our situation. Didn't mean to skip that. Oh, ouch. Very, very human traits there. That's why I love Sakura as a character, is because so many of her negative characteristics are so fucking real and undeniably human for, like, I, like, uh. I can understand Sakura's point. It's painful to have your ideal in front of you because it makes you feel inferior. Well, I do understand, but... I ask timidly. Tosaka might punch me if she was here. Oh, really? I wonder why that part. I mean, there's the whole that she didn't get sexually abused and abused aspect, but because she's more outgoing and like, I guess her personality.
I wouldn't change a thing about you, Sakura. But if it made you feel better to get those traits, then, like, it's a good thing. You know? I don't think you should actively be like, you should be exactly like this person. You'll be so much better off. Because like, that's just... Of course, this is depending on the situation, but really. Sakura sounds happy. Hmm, I hate to admit it, but Osaka certainly is cool. She's really manly in the sense that she takes responsibility for what she says. Yeah, dude. She's got, like, that... That top energy, but really, she's not. <laughs> I remember the time that... I remember the time that I was given up and I had to say bye to her. I guess they were so very tiny that all they could remember is that they were related to each other. Mm, that's so, so sad. あ、<笑> Sakura's VA is doing a fantastic job making these lines just hit. Like when she's talking from the heart like this, she always has that softer part of her voice. Okay, the music cutting off has me worried. Oh, you can use your magic for dark things? Also, that portrait looks new. Have we seen that one before? This is getting kind of uneasy. Right, it's dark and inherently evil. It's not exactly great magic to have. That's... Oh, yeah. That's unfortunate. I can't just nod in response to that. I don't know what kind of magic she was taught at the Ma Mato household. Magic, the magic she was taught is a heresy, and Sakura's ashamed of it. The problem between Sakura and Tosaka is the difference in their family's magic. The more Sakura hates the magic of Mato, the more self-loathing she feels. I don't think she hates it. Wow. That's interesting. Huh. He's so, like, serious about that. Then, Sakura looks up and starts talking like Tosaka. Yeah, it seems when it comes to magic, it kind of triggers, like, something in her. It must be because of all the psychological torment Zoken put her through by teaching her about magic. Her brain just automatically locks up and goes into that defensive mechanism of... Oh, this is how it is. You know. Yeah, given the whole crestworm situation, you don't really have a choice now, do you? Yeah. <laughs> No, you don't need to sugarcoat it. Ugh. Feel so bad for you. 
No, silly. Just because Shiro has it hard too doesn't negate what you've been through. Yeah, she mentioned that during the rain scene. That's an interesting, like, perspective to have, and to feel that selfishness for wanting oneself to live is is sad at the same time as with how much suffering she's been through. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yikes. That is not... That's not. Uh, that's just. Can this this game getting too real, homie? This shit's getting too real. It's like this this route was was written with the depression, uh, with, with like basically um, clinical, chronic depression in mind and trauma in mind the most because holy shit, that's real. That is fucking real. Right, now I get what she means. Ah, uh, Sakura bows her head in apology, but I don't want her apologizing for something like that. Yeah, I don't might have been. I really hope so. I'm improving, even though it may be really slowly. If I didn't notice Sankar's presence recently, that means I haven't improved at all. <laughs> A watermelon? Nice. I sigh with relief. I guess I could excuse myself if it was half a year ago. She's the first person besides Kiritsugu who saw me training in magic. I practice in front of Tosaka these past few days, but that's different from the training I do in the shed. So Sakura's opinion is like a test. Sakura's motto's mag magus, so I might be able to get a good score. Oof. Yeah, she's not blunt like Rin is, so basically, my guy, you you doing terrible. It's, it's garbage. Yes, beyond failing. Oh, oh. real. Ouch. Crap. Sakura doesn't seem similar to his sister, but she actually is. Yeah, a little, little bits and pieces. Oh no. Now it's getting serious. Oh. Because of how much physical trauma and pain that puts him through. You were. Mm -hmm. He's always at a risk of dying ever since he started doing it, so... I understand what Sakura wants to say. Creating a magic circuit is close to death for me. My body would explode if the con concentration in me is off by a few millimeters. But isn't that an ordinary compensation for Amagus? Kiritsugu was the one who told me that death is Amagus' constant companion. Hmm. 
I love how, like, the whole magic training, the way he's an exception, it really does feel analogous to the whole high jump thing. Mm -hmm. Something that only Shiro could do, you know? Ouch! I just realized. We gave up our hero of justice ideal for this. And now she's saying that we follow through on what we've decided until the end. Oh boy, this is coming full circle back to what Kirei said about does she really mean this much to you? Like, keep that in mind for the end or something. Oh no. It's really embarrassing if you say something like that with a straight face. Damn. You big ol' soon head, Jiro. Maybe filled with sin and horny, but it is pure. This is getting me really nervous. I knew you would never betray anyone. <sighs> Maybe I'm just reading too much into these little lines, but it's scary. I don't know how to respond when she talks seriously like that. <laughs> She's not. She means it. Every bit of it. And more. I'm embarrassed, but I tell her how I feel. Sakura... ...smiles happily and looks straight at me. This is bad. The distracting thoughts I shook off earlier will return if she makes a face like that. I cough intentionally. I look to the wall to Osaka and Ili on the other side. <laughs> the impure thoughts be fill in their heads. She must understand how I feel as she blushes and starts muttering. I bet I look like that too. Oh, they're gonna be doing some weed. Not weed. Weed. <laughs> weed! I was trying to say weird. <laughs> they're gonna be doing some weed. Nah, I was gonna say they're gonna get into some lovey dovey bird shit tonight. Oh. My, I, my fucking heart can't take it anymore. It's just, this is pure. This is so pure. I bitterly smile at her int intermittent words. Actually, it's something I want to ask her if I can. She's so timid that she probably doesn't even know how much I've fallen for her. <laughs> but Sakura, I'm glad you're saying that, but that defeats the whole point. Sakura suddenly falls silent when she lies down. She must have been tired. Looks like she suddenly got sleepy when she laid down. But still... Oh, right. God, she's beautiful. She must have no intention of going to sleep as Sakura keeps talking. Oh, 
少しずつ動くようにもなってきてるよかったほら姉さんが手当てをしてから随分経っているでしょ随分経ってるってさくら姉さんも姉さんですよね魔術刻印を利用するのはおお I keep skipping, I'm sorry. Sucker says it like it's nothing, but. Uh, oh. We're boned. Because Sucker doesn't know the full extent of what this is going to do to Shiro. That's just. That's just peachy. あんなのはその場しのぎで7日も持たないって分かってるくせに Sounds very out of place そうですよそろそろ切れちゃう頃だからちゃんとした手当てをしないと私の魔術じゃ根本的な解決はできないから今度ライダーにいいアイディアがないか聞いてみますね Nasu really does an effective job at lacing these wholesome, sweet scenes with this, the, the, just the, the scary dread. Sakura looks sleepy. I can't reply. I, I can only convince myself that Sakura is saying strange things because she's about to fall asleep. I, I have a feeling that this is going to be one of the last times this is going to be... They're going to be able to be like this. Oh. Dude, this is going to make me tear up. Sakura slowly closes her eyes. Her breathing becomes more gentle and she goes into a deep sleep. I turn off the light and leave her room. I saw Sakura fall asleep peacefully, but I don't feel any peace of mind. Oh. That's not foreboding. I mean, I kept saying that it has to do with when she falls asleep, dude. Uh, I hate... I, I, if I'm right, I hate being right. I don't... I think that's what she said unconsciously. Right before she fell asleep. Here's our interlude as usual. Sakura, hide so. Oh, this is from the past, ain't it? He opens the door without waiting for a reply. Great, why do we- she, she, she has nightmares of, like, the past, then. He has never waited for his younger sister's reply before opening this door. You're a slug. He clucks his tongue and walks into the room, scratching at the wall. Mato Shinji wanders through his sister's room like a blind dog. Oh, this must have been when Shinji discovered the truth. He keeps asking questions that will not be answered. Like, I assume Shinji had always been an asshole, but never to the extent that he wasn't when he discovered the truth. There's no one in the room. His sister has not been home in the, the past few days. It is obvious that the master of this room is not here, but Shinji wanders through it all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. He throws the clock that touches his hand. The sound of shattering glass is more annoying than he thought. He starts throwing things like mad. This is like always, too. This outlet has been his daily routine for the past few years. Good God, never mind. It is his best opposition that began three years ago when he found out the truth. Okay, so it all started three years ago when he found out. The Manto bloodline came to an end when he was born. The noble family lost its power, becoming mere humans. The only special thing is the accumulated knowledge. The once noble family of Magi is fated to perish in this Far East country. He has known that since he was young. The Manto family was a family that passed down secret techniques. But it is all in past tense now. As the Mato are no longer able to use magic, they are to blend into society as ordinary people. But he did not think so. Their magic circuit faded away, leaving them unable to perform their secret techniques. The bloodline of Magi ended for Mato and his father's generation, and he knows that he does not have the right to succeed the Mato name. 
but the Mato family still has the records. The bloodline perished, but the accumulated knowledge is not lost. That itself is special enough for the boy. He thinks he is different from others. The Mato family have been chosen. That will not change even if they lose their power and cease to be magi. He was proud of himself because he was born into a special family to be raised in a special way. Even if he is a failure as a maid, because he is a child born into the chosen family. But a new child slipped into the chosen family. His father adopted a girl who had none of her own. It all happened more than ten years ago. The girl named Sakura became his little sister from that day on. At first, he hated his new sibling. He did not want any outsiders coming into the special Mato household. But the boy started to accept his sister day by day. The girl named Sakura was silent and ordinary, no more capable than a guard dog. It is a waste of time to be hostile against someone like that, and it is more charming if one is to consider her a servant. He looked through books, memorizing magic he could not use, to remind himself that he was the Mato heir. He was the only one who could enter the study. His adopted sister could never be named the successor, so she has no right to trespass here, there. His sister would live as a normal human being, never being taught the family's surviving knowledge, or so he thought. This fact greatly satisfied his pride. The family of Magi has only one successor. He knew that, so he did not question their separate upbringings. It's unfortunate, man, when you think about the whole reason she came here, that's ironic. Only one could learn magic, then it was only natural that his sister be raised apart. He's so deluded. Yes, he felt sympathy for his sister. He lived in the same house and had the same parents, but he was the only one who could call himself special. And he, pitied, and he pitied his sister for not being chosen. It is like compassion of a superior being looking down onto others, and it is his most reliable pride. The brother treated his sister as a failure. The sister feared her brother and always looked down as if avoiding his gaze. He thought it was because of shame, and he despised and loved her for it at the same time. Until he found out the truth. <laughs> That was all he could manage when he accidentally found the room. A room he has never been told about. Knowledge that was not taught to him. Talent that was not given to him. Everything was in the room. A naked girl lay in the middle of the room. Around her were swarms of black worms and his terrifying grandfather. And his father glared at the boy as if he was a nuisance, an attitude he had never taken towards him before. And that ended it. Everything he believed in, everything that constructed him was turned upside down. It was not him that was special. It was not his sister that was kept at a distance, it was not her that was pitiable, and it was not her that was looking down on the other person. His life completely changed. Since he no longer needed to hide anything, his father took a defiant attitude towards his son. He started spending more time with the boy's sister instead. His sister did not say anything, but would just hang her head like always. She still acted as though running away from his gaze when she would say, As if pitying him, she said it with the emotion that he once felt for his sister. Right, this is all what I assumed is why Shinji snapped. Getting it from his perspective is definitely good, as it helps get that understanding a little bit more. Unfortunately, I don't have much sympathy for him at all. It gets a terrible situation, and that kind of those kind of dyna family dynamics do fuck children up bad. But what he do has done is just unforgivable. He laughed. It was funny. It was so funny that he wanted to kill. The one he had thought he was his pet was actually his master and he was just a fool. Which one is the funny one? It must be both. At that time, as he went back to the mansion with unsteady steps, he realized the world had not been turned upside down. It had been like this all along. The inverted one. The one who was misunderstood was him. It is just that he finally realized his own miserableness. The three years after that were only pain for him. His father died and his grandfather only cared about Sakura. Mata Shinji became just like air in his house. He was treated as an object whose existence did not matter, and that was truly was the case. She pitied the air. She apologized, though she never spoke the words aloud. She apologized every time she saw him. She apologized for taking him onto Shinji's place. She could have just ignored him. Then he wouldn't have hated her, wouldn't have clung to hope. Sakura apologized. Apologizing means submitting something. Then... Fuck you, that's such a weird, you're truly a messed up sicko if that's your if that's your thought. Considering all the contempt he had endured, he saw nothing wrong in accepting this. 
Oh, this must have been just like a week ago or whatever. We all know what Shinji's here for. And that's disgusting. It is really disgusting. Man, that inferiority complex do be showing. The room shows no signs of life, but that is to be expected. Mato Sakura's room is the underground worm's nest, and this is merely for show. The master of the room does not care how much he breaks the things in this room. This room is no different from the door plate that hangs at the, at the entrance. Ah,それなのに謝るんだよな、お前は。ごめんなさい、ごめんなさいってさ。じゃあさ、すまないと思うんだら、僕の言うことだけを素直に聞けよ。罪の意識、そんなもの知ったことか。Good grief. He scratches the sheets, something that was his. Why did a doll that did not think or resist leave him? Oh, maybe this was when she first started going to Emiya's for dinner? That might be it. Or this was a week ago, either or. So that... I think that they're trying to show the beginning of uh, Shinji's, like, fractured relationship with Emiya. I mean, the whole point is, I'm sure from the very beginning, Shinji thought, him thought himself as superior to Emiya, but respected him because of how much he tried and how much um, he could respect that, at the very least, but he always knew he was better. So that's why they got along, because he, you know, sure is just a nice person, and he was like, I can accept you. You try hard. Even if you could never reach my level, I can accept that. But everything comes crashing down and it gets worse as his psyche deteriorates. It is quite sad to see a human being go through that, but I cannot feel much pity for him at all. That was his miscalculation. He knew she was attracted to Emiya Shiro. A thing that held no interest in anything started to have opinions after getting to know him. She gradually regained herself and in the end she left him. He trained her to never disobey him, but now she chooses a total stranger over her own brother. His grandfather does not even try to take Sakura back. He said it is fine, as is, and moreover, confined him to this house. I feel like I'm an actual idiot. This might be taking place in the present. I'm not sure. I, I feel like a dumbass, but if that's the case, then that means Shinji's gonna do something soon and it's gonna be despicable. That's right. If a doll is disobedient, he'll just reset the relationship to be like it was before. If she gained hope to become a human. Fuck you, Shinji. Shinji, this is why nobody fucking loves you! <laughs> he laughs. The clouded window reflects a face as ghastly as a skull. Screw you, Shinji. Go die. It's afternoon now. Tosaka seems busy and Sakura's sleeping, so I should make dinner. My left arm moves even though it reacts slow, so it shouldn't hinder me if I'm to make something simple. They really just have freaking swordfish available that easily? Wow. Simmered meat and potato? I mean, if that was chicken and potato, I'd eat the shit out of that. I don't like fish that much, unfortunately. I check the contents of the refrigerator and decide the menu. There are two additional people eating now, so the food gets used up quickly. I should find some time to go to the shopping district tomorrow. Meanwhile, after dinner... Or during dinner... Everyone must have liked having dinner ready when they came here, since they all seem to be in a good mood. I'm worried that Ryder isn't here, but I'm sure she has her reasons. Her top priority is guarding Sakura, so maybe she has no intention of spending time around Tosaka, who may end up being her enemy. Doubt it. I'll pack it up and take her some if she doesn't come. See, that's that's just how kind of a boy Shiro is. Ryder seems to like desolate places, so I bet she's either in the dojo or the shed. 
ってこういうのが得意なんださくらは洋食で白は和食派ってことうん、mm -hmm. Dosaka picks up the fried swordfish and looks at me in surprise. It's golden fried with a scent of ginger with an elegant soy sauce taste. He seems to really like it. <laughs> Ilya eats the potatoes in satisfaction. It's unfortunate that she's only eating the potato part of the simmered meat and potato, but I'm glad she likes it. <laughs> ah, I love it. Love you, Ilya. Wait, Sakura's tilting her head in confusion, chopsticks in hand. Sakura, what's that? What's up? Oh. And she really is the superior cook. I made such a stupid mistake on something I'm so used to cooking. I serve myself out the big dish in the center and try some. That's strange. This tastes normal. さくら、なんか変かな。変って。これ、お砂糖と塩が逆になってませんか?甘みが全くないんですけど。ああ。そう肉じゃがってこういう味でしょそれは隠し味らしきものが入ってるから他のとは違うけど。ちょっとは真似
そんな。ウチ。背中なんて預けられない。うーグ。けど、姉さん。あなたはあなただけ守っていればいいのよ。私たちに少しでも済まないって思うんなら、こんなことで手をわずらわせないでちょうだい。あなたはライダーに自分と
You're speaking like a magus, I get it, but holy shit, dude. Come show some compassion. There's lines that make sense in her in the context of Rin's character, but then there's other lines that are just good god. Shiro's bringing out a good big brain point. Yeah. Yeah, how could we not? Man, this is not like Tosaka. She should be able to say it like it's nothing. Instead, she's clenching her fists like she's trying to convince herself. Yeah, obviously, it's it's a lie. You know, she's it's a, it's a deluded lie to get her to not feel any sympathy towards her. But, dude... The way you say it and deliver it is just, oh my god. Like, you know, she's a tsundere to, to, to Shiro, but god damn, she's just like a complete heartless jerk to Sakura. In, in the sense of that's how she treats her, like, I get the point here, I'm just saying. Yeah, Chiro's dense, but to this at least, he's like, I'm not a fucking idiot, Rin. Yep. I have nothing else to add, Shiro's correct. Stop calling me out! <laughs> Tosaka's face turns red with anger. But I don't feel the usual intensity and I know why. Skip that line because I'm an idiot. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Like, I get it. It's because, um, being friends with her would only make things difficult for her if she ended up becoming the true enemy because then she'd have attachment and it wouldn't be easy to dispose of her. So keeping that distance makes sense. It's just sad. Oh, that's uh, Going there is going to be bad. Tosaka looks away and starts to walk. I reply to her absent mindedly and follow. Then. She calls my name without looking at me and. <laughs> nice. Tosaka grumbles, embarrassed. There is nobody at the Central Park. The park that's deserted even during the day is even quieter after the murder yesterday. The park is not a place for relaxation within the business district, and it is no different from a desert in an uncultivated land. Yeah. Calling it an accident feels silly. I don't know how anything like that could just be an accident. I still see traces of blood on the grass. Like, this isn't Final Destination. It looks like a bucket full was spilled in four separate areas. The darkened patches of some distance between them, probably because the victims frantically tried to escape. No. It seems different. So if what we saw wasn't the shadow, but something else entirely? Well, if that's the case, then it's gotta be soccer, then. Because... That's disturbing, man. That's disturbing. Yeah, 
ここ一帯の魔力は枯渇していない。いや。まあ、ここで起きたことが予定外の食事だろうって見方は変わらないわ。I think the violence and hatred was triggered by the、um, the perversion of the strangers that would lead as a trigger for Sakura. I'm convinced at this point that it's her. That's all the information we can get out of this place. Tosaka and I leave the sight of the tragedy behind us. We didn't find anything at Shinto. Maybe Zokun is not active tonight, probably because the incident yesterday was so vivid. The date's about to change. A riverside breeze blows as we trudge home. And. Tosaka. Sakura. Mato no koke shan nan da yo na. I suddenly feel like asking the question that was on my mind for a while. Nani o imasara. Yikes. Don't think this is a great idea asking that kind of question. The magic is not exactly a good thing. Ah, so you could. そうね、マトウの魔術は戒めとか強制とかそういうものだって聞くけど、霊女だってマトウがいなかったらできなかったって言うし。Really? じゃあサクラの魔術は制約なのかな。That is quite peculiar. On that day, the magic soccer used when the crestworm tortured her must have been Ryder's power. Hmm. What if that that restriction disappears? That's the scary part. So, so that's all right. The Tosaka から見て Sakura ってどれぐらいの腕前なんだ。マトの後継者ってことは同じぐらいなのか。I don't think. If they, uh, I don't know if that's a good question, given what we were told, you know, about when Sakura told us about that part of her worry. Yeah, makes sense. That's right. That's why they wanted to adopt her in the first place. Interesting. It's a good analogy to describe that. Yep. Still, I had imagined stronger than Shiro, but I get her point. Oh! Well, if we're talking about that aspect, sure. Hmm. But what if that's not an issue anymore? That's the scary thing. I see. I couldn't figure out what kind of mega Sakura is, but I got to know their powers, their power balance. Masaka isn't one to bluff, so she must be speaking the truth. <laughs> yeah, you are. But. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, we see bits and pieces of Rin's care for Sakura there. Um, but uh, Shiro's more just guilty about not noticing all the other little signs that she wasn't okay. She doesn't even need to tell me. Sakura's Sakura, even if she is a Magus. First of all, I'm not that skillful. No matter who Sakura may really be, I can only treat her like I always have. <laughs> Damn。Fair enough. Tosaka's kindness makes my heart jump. It's weird, right? See, Tosaka really is a good sister. Then, a look of happiness on her face, she says something odd. She's always like that. Mm -hmm. She said that. あの子が私と同じ学園に入ってからは毎日のように弓道部に入り浸ってたし。うん。それでね、しばらく経ってから気がついたのよ。いや。一度も笑ってないって。Very yeah. various good point. That's something I'm hearing for the first time, but I can't deny what she's saying. Come to think of it, Sakura always looked gloomy at school. Been there, done that. It's... Depression really, really screws you up as a person because... It's not exactly easy to be happy and outgoing when inside you feel nothing but just pain and regret and all these other terrible feelings. So you end up looking miserable every day. And who wants to talk to someone like that? Like, who wants to interact with someone like that? Not many people would ever do that. And then you end up screwing up your social life via that. And it just makes everything worse. You're going to get more upset about yourself. You're going to get more sad. It's a non-stop cycle. It's disgusting how bad it is. Depression really screws everything up. Um, so I get... Then, you know, you have your safe space where you're allowed to smile and you can feel good for a little bit of the time. And... Thankfully, Sakura had that in a person. Not everyone is so lucky, but for her, I'm glad that she was lucky because of what she's been through. Would you even consider it luck at that point? I guess. Yeah, we keep getting... We keep being told that she's only okay, ever okay when, um... Shiro's around her. Her words should make me happy, but... Yeah. Seem to hide a dangerous truth. Exactly. They keep building this up. It's past one o'clock when I return to my room. I sit down on my futon. Our patrol yielded nothing. All we did was confirm that this morning's news was real. Enemies we must defeat. Just thinking about them sends cold, nauseous feelings through me. Even a human could match Zoken or Assassin, but those two are different. I don't even know if the Black Shadow is a concept of death, and Saber is someone we don't even stand a chance against. But, as long as there are victims, we can't just ignore them, saying we can't beat them. Put my hand on the red cloth. I have a weapon. I don't know how far this will get me, but I do have a weapon. The question is if I can manage it, and if my body can withstand it. I untie the knot on the red cloth. The cloth loosens up and blood flows into my arm. Pain. At that instant, I think I heard a beast's howl. I'm stabbed. My whole body is pierced. Is this pain? If this is pain, then the pain I've experienced until now isn't pain. That- Oh, that is scary to think about. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. The floor's ruggedness, the softest the futon hurts. It feels like I'm sitting on a mountain of swords. 
The air is poisonous, and I die three times as I breathe it in. Birds are chirping in the distance. The wind is strong. There's no moisture. My skin dries and turns into sand, flowing, scouring, crumbling. Dude. Keep in mind, this is this is him not fighting with it. This is just him taking the cloth off. If that isn't worrying, I don't know what is. Tongs are inserted from the hollowed holes. 32 under where my shoulder used to be. They carefully, accurately, and elaborately pierce my eternal jugular vein, trachea, spinal cord, sympathetic nervous system, lo lobus superior pulmon pulmonis, lobus medius, pulmonis dextri, lobus inferior pulmonis, main artery, heart, diaphragm, spleen, stomach, liver, gallbladder, and colon. I know where the most of those are. <laughs> I haven't uh, I haven't read about the lobus superior pulmonis or the other ones uh, uh, in a while, ever since... Um, biology when specifically when we when we were on um I don't remember what that unit's called it was my favorite though it's crumbling time slows to an impossible crawl I see 60 trillion cells crumbling apart at the rate of three four not per second Wow your cells are just constantly dying there's no pain there's no pain there's no pain there's no only fear oof oh god the end roll invades with amazing speed. The flashback stomps with a fantastic image. Death before my eyes. Death past me. Death at the moment. The pain is not physical, but only the explosion of negation every time death is thrown at me. I like the effects of the lighting that they do with this. I hear a sound. The sound of my head striking the floor. My eyes are hot. I realize I've been crying. Oh, good grief. Des desperately, I stifle a scream building in my throat. I curl up, push my head against the floor, grab my left arm with my right hand, and just cry. This voice acting is very, very solid. You can just hear how much pain he's in. I'm scared. The thing I've been missing since the fire ten years ago. I'm scared. A natural fear for any living thing. I'm scared. Fear. Like, this is genuine fear since the fire. For the first time in my life, I want to run away from my end. It's not because dying will hurt. It's not because I want to live. It's just because it fills me with dread. I tie up the red cloth. I tie the knot tight so that it'll never come loose again. I groan and cry. The priest said I'll die if I use my left arm. That's nonsense. I'll die if I take this cloth off. My body might be able to bear it, but my mind will die. His mind, huh? Maybe it's more of a mental... Like, of course it's gonna affect his body physically, but at the end of the day, I think he's arguing that his mental state will suffer the absolute most damage. My consciousness crumbled away when I loosened the cloth and my shoulder touched the outside air. I could not bear it. I cannot live without this cloth. No. If this arm is a contradictory existence that people should not associate with, my body, its death foretold, runs to the terminal station. The ship with a crack in the bilge can only sink into the ocean depths. The passengers unaware. Too late for anything. Y'all realize what this means? Even if we get a happy ending, let's pretend that we get a happy ending. Shiro ain't gonna live that long. I doubt he could just become a master magus like to, like Kira said and, and live till 80. I I don't I, I don't believe that. Like he maybe would live like 10 years. If that. Great. I love knowing this scam. Thank you. It was all sharp, like my breath is running wild. I had a bad dream. I wiped the sweat off my forehead. I can't stand up. I stay coward, bearing the strange pain. I can't remember. My left arm hurts. It hurts so much that I want to cut it off. I try to recall why it hurts, but I can't remember how to recollect anything in the past. The pain goes away. I gather up my consciousness. I must be because I was asleep. The dispersed memories look as if they can be cooked nicely, just like chopped onions. See, I can add color with soy sauce, add flavor with pepper, and add some potato starch to complete the dish. <laughs> That's so silly. Naso and his food stuff. I murmur to myself. My head is good for nothing, but I can still manage to come up with a conclusion. 
In short, I don't have to eat something that's not good. My left arm is already gone. Nobody relies on something that's not there. Therefore, Emmy sure has no weapon. This, this foreign body is something I must suppress using all my life. And will contaminate me for the rest of my life. Ugh. And the fact that he's gonna be forced to fucking use it, eventually. <laughs> Suppressing it with the cloth is meaningless. If I want to rid myself of this poison, there's only one way. Then cut it off. Oh, he, his mental state is being destroyed and broken. But the thing is, unless they answer this later, could, couldn't... could Is that the true? Couldn't that arm just be removed and he'd be fine? Or would he instantly die without it? But I still hold on to my left arm. Wow, that, that sound effect was nice. A gun is pointed at my forehead. An image of a trigger. The trigger is my left arm. Once pulled, the gun will fire, blowing my brains from my skull. I shudder. Hold my breath and stare at the white wall. That was... Nasu knows how to make things terrifying without... It being like a jump scare or stupid. It's nice. Clutching my arm, I lie down. Then cut it off. Close my eyes. My whimpering finished. I decide to get some sleep for tomorrow. A small sound. I awaken to the sound of footsteps. I wake up to my I wake up my dozing mind. It's almost two o'clock. It hasn't even been thirty minutes since I fell asleep. I get up, still unconsciously holding on to my left arm. Sakura. Outside the room, I call out to the hallway where the footsteps came from. Oh, Sakura? It's not that I know who's there. I just thought Sakura might be there. The door opens. Sakura steps through into my room. Biting her lip in embarrassment, she looks down as if unsure of what to say. Oh... She's saying that she's hot and bothered again. Sakura apologizes. But I'm the one who should apologize. The reason why Sakura's here, I know well enough the pain she has to go through. The Crestworm feeds on her magical energy, so Sakura periodically needs to receive more from Omegas. I stand up. What was I thinking? I was so caught up with my left arm that I forgot about Sakura. I can't be forgiven even if I apologize. Senpai. Yeah. I want to make love to you, if that's alright with you. I use my left arm to pull her to me. I want to take that lead to make up for forcing her to come to me. Well... Oh, Damn, that's pitiful. I unconsciously used my left arm and was reminded of the pain. Still, it shouldn't hurt so long as I have the cloth on, so what am I frightened about? Oh. I have to take my clothes off. Can you take yours off too, Sakura? I shake off the dizziness and I look at her. Then... Oh. A suggestion? Well, I know we're gonna get into some weird lewd shit, but I can at least keep this in until we get to the actual lewd, and then I'm gonna cut, but, well. Senpai, I have a suggestion. I don't know if she's happy or nervous, but Sakura says something strange. Suggestion? Oh, yes, you're tired from the patrol, right? Hmm. How should I answer? I can't deny it because I really am tired, but I'm not tired enough to not have sex with Sakura. Actually, I want to have sex even if I am tired. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired. But I still want to make love to you. So you don't have to be concerned about me. Well, you came all the way here, so don't stop now. I'm ready to go. I'll be troubled all night if Sakura stops now. Yes, I have a suggestion. I'm sure you're tired, so let me start off. Eh? Sakura smiles. I nod even though I have no idea what she's talking about. Right, the music begins, and here's where things go south, and it's not- Ah, I gulp. It's Sakura's request, I'm still standing. On the other hand, Sakura's naked on her knee- Oh, I, I, I see where this is leading to. Okay. That's a suggestion. <laughs> well, damn. I'm gonna have to cut very soon. But, uh, this is, uh, this is a thing that's happening. <laughs> 
Yep, here we go. Things started to get really weird. The, I gotta say, the dialogue's pretty bad. There was some wholesome stuff in there, like with Sakura talking about lovey-dovey stuff and how much she cares, and like there were some cute little lines like that, but for the most part, it was a pretty basic eight scene. It was fine. Just a lot of really, really weird analogies, like a honeypot analogy. Just some weird stuff. Also, things got a little bit weird near the end where Shiro just started like hallucinating almost about... <laughs> I can't really... I can't recall what happened tonight. The pleasure that was only pain. It's getting really weird. Also, I cannot believe it, but... They actually had Sakura's VA voice align. I'm not gonna play it because I don't want you two to freak out, but... You can probably hear what that would sound like. It's very on the nose of what that is. It's like it was a dream. I fall in Why is this always, like, dreamlike, these scenes? It's always portrayed that way. My tired body forgets about the fact that Sokka came to the room. The uneasiness in my mind, what happened tonight, and... I go back to the light sleep I was having an hour ago. Makes you wonder, did this really happen? At all. Oh, no. Oh, no. It is in a red sea. The familiar scenery is submerged in the seawater, turning the town into an aquarium. Instead of air, something thick flows into the throat. The more it gasps for breath, the more of the heavy, watery substance it takes sucks in. So this has to be underwater. Ooh, she's on the roof. I'm pretty sure it's Sakura, so that's why I'm saying she. It gasps out that it is painful. It originally lived on land. It cannot possibly live underwater. It tries to reach the surface, and it eventually reaches the highest place in the town. The suffocation does not abate. It looks down at the town, the lungs burning from lack of oxygen, and curses the peacefully sleeping townspeople. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. There's no air here. There's no pain here. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It drags corpses behind it. Its body is bright red with blood. It hurts, it hurts, need more, it hurts. In its black hands are many corpses. Grody, fuck me. This is getting spooky. The distorted hands grasp many dead bodies. Need more, need more, need more, need more. It smashes them, dying itself red. Need more air. The air hurts. The water pressure is uncaring. The water pressure is unbearable. It smears the red blood all over its body. All it thinks that the blood is the only water tied protection and it has to live in this water. It reaches out its twisted hands. Illuminated by the moon, the dark hand becomes a giant shadow and descends to crush the town. Yeah, that's... They're not really being subtle anymore. They really aren't being subtle anymore. She wakes up. She's breathing hard from her restless sleep. Astonished by the dream's realism, she hugs her feverish body. At that instant, her hands are wet with blood. Yep. They're finally confirming it. I don't know how that thing comes out when she's asleep, but... It's... Hmm. It's... It's... It feels like... She needs more and more and more. It's becoming an addiction. Like the the blood and the the magical energy she's getting from the blood, and um, you got to realize that unfortunately Sakura has a lot of blood on her hands, both figuratively and literally. She's murdered many many people, and that's just depressing to think about. She shuts her eyes and pulls her hands away. But when she looks again, they are clean. Interesting. Where does it? Where is the? Where is it a dream? And where does the real part begin? And what's weird is all the eight scenes have had this weird, like elusive feel in this route, like this dream. Like, well, some of them were dreams. It's, I don't get it. I, although she knows it was just a hallucination, she can't stop trembling. 
Are they connected, not necessarily in body, but spirit, rather? That could be it. She trembles. She trembles like a broken machine. She trembles so violently that bolts might spill from her, ear her ears. All the parts in her body will spill out like that, and the image is so frightening that she cannot stop trembling. VA did an incredible job with that line. The shaky fear in that her voice there, mm, so good. Also, she did this the other day, um, when after she woke up after seeing Shiro's arm get uh, cut off. And she did the thing where she had to wash her face again. She heads to the bathroom. She makes it only a few steps. Her quaking limbs will not follow her orders. She braces herself against the desk. Her vision wavers. She can't make it to the door. She can't even see it clearly. She can't remember what kind of a dream she was having or why she got out of bed. She's broken. She can't remember anything. She can't think of anything. There's nothing but lust and hunger. That's fantastic. Thanks, Zokin, for training her body to be that, like that. She wants hot skin, breath, sensation. And kind words. Huh, that's, um... Kind words, I mean, the lust part is there, the, the first five. Um, kind words, though. Her empty but mushed up insights plead for more... Mm hmm Is this when she goes to Shiro's room and the scene before plays? She lies on the desk and shakes her head. Fear and infinite self-hatred. Oh, God. Something is wrong. Why hasn't she had enough? Fear as it goes, she was loved just like in her fantasies, but it hasn't filled her up at all. Oh, this is after... Yikes. It felt great, and she thought there could be no greater happiness, but she's not the least bit satisfied. She's probably empty, and that's why he alone cannot fill her up. But she doesn't want anyone else. She wants to be his for much longer. She wanted it at the cost of time, emotion, and other people, so why didn't she do so? And she naturally realizes that she can eliminate all the things she just thought about. She feels dizzy. It's not so far-fetched. What's scary is that she really thought that it would be fun. The darkness, the shadow. Oh my god, it's dark, dude. She really thought it would be fun. She leans on the desk. She keeps her collapsing body steady. The frightening dream becomes clearer every day. The frightening dream becomes less frightening every day. She is breaking down. Until now, it was only her body. But now, she's beginning to, beginning to go mad. This is hard to sit through. If the shadow and her are connected, is it more of a metaphor of what she'll become? If, that, if that's the case, is it a lure? Like, it's purposefully luring her into that. If that's the case, could Angra have enough intel intelligence to become the Shadow to create these acts and use the connection with Sakura to, to sort of give the visions to her and make her accelerate faster into that addiction so that she can become that? That's the only thing I could think of because I still... I, I don't... I'm serious. I could have swore Zoken talked about putting Grail inside of her. Mons escape her mouth. Her vague memory is no problem. It doesn't matter if she cannot remember what happened a few hours ago. She's not scared of being in bed forever. She is terrified of becoming something else, which is going to happen very soon. She doesn't want to become a bad person. If she slowly breaks down like this, she will go crazy in the end. She'll probably become something that will cause him the most trouble. Yep. That's what terrifies her. It's scary to go crazy. It's more scary than anything else. If she does, he will not touch her, nor will he love her. She won't be able to be with him. She won't even know if she is with him. Not only that, if she loses her mind, he will be with another woman. She doesn't want that. She really doesn't want that. She always thought he would, he should be with someone else, someone better suited to him. She can no longer accept that. Because he's already hers. That's why it's frightening. She's scared of what she might do. Uh, this is so hard to get through, to sit through completely... 
She knows, yet there's no salvation. She cannot tell him of this dysfunction. If she tells him, it will be back to the cold for her. Ah, that's sad. That's so sad. That line hits different, though. This one up here. Besides that, she can no longer accept that. That hits home. She cannot return to the cold now that she has known warmth. Yeah, because... Oh, that, that hits different, too. I can, I'll tell you, dude, if you want to experience some of the most painful thing a human can go through, get warmth for the first time and then be tossed right back into the cold. It is hell. She wants to keep smiling at him. She knows what will be lost if this continues. Her wish is just a desire. She wishes for one person's happiness, yet her happiness requires the ruin of that same person. Wow. I, I'm so curious as to what it is because she she got so much pleasure from seeing Cheryl hurt. I feel like there's more to that than just the so he can stop fighting. If she cannot do so, she should just break down and disappear. If she's going to go crazy, she should disappear now and become a monster in a place with no people. That should be the best choice. But she still clings to it. She wishes for more because it's warm and happy here. So why? Why is such a normal desire forbidden to her? Oh, every line that she says hurts my heart. She shakes off her weakness. She's not envious. She's not holding any grudges. She justifies her decision, saying that she merely wants to stay here. <laughs> the mental anguish within her right now is scary to how real it is, but also just how much of it isn't even her fault to begin with. She shakes her head in denial. She shuts her dark mind with an empty head. There are no happy endings. She turns her eyes away from the obvious conclusion. God, that voice acting hurts. It, it's so... Oh. Her hazy mind is already experiencing another nightmare. Forcing down her wish to be saved, she keeps on crying. She keeps forsaking that idea to be saved. And that's the saddest part. Overdose. Okay, that, that is, that's not, that's not, that's not a weird, that, that's not a weird day title. Okay. Are you fucking serious? Okay. Game, um, chill the fuck out. Just, just. Just chill a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> I typed that the wrong way, but y'all get it. If you've seen that meme before, you know. Um, this was an interesting episode. It, it, something's happening very, very soon. And it's gonna blow up in our faces. nasu has been building it and building it. Building it and building it and building it and building it. And it's gonna explode into agony. Just the, everything with Shiro's arm, Shiro's fate, Sakura, it's terrifying. Everything is, I just, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm scared. Everything's gonna go to hell. But I will say that I've, I've been loving playing this. Every single minute of it is just fantastic. Um... I'm nervous, but there's not much game left. There's like five days left, I think. That's really scary to think about because we're almost done, which means we're getting the climax is building and I'm just waiting for it to burst open to just pop. This day feels ominous because of its title, so it could be this day or it could be tomorrow. But regardless, we'll just have to go on that adventure together. Everyone else knows what's going to happen, but I, I'm, I'm certainly scared. And honestly, Sakura is just... I can't find a part of myself that could dislike her. And to all the people that do dislike her, like, I'm sorry I can't feel the same as you, I just, I can't. There's a part of me that can't dislike her because of how real she is. How much 
of a flawed human she is still there's so much to love about her and so much to take for her very very good character i enjoy her just how weak and flawed she is not weak in the sense that she can't do anything but just it's rare that you get to see that like these truly truly flawed characters especially for like a female character to be written this well without it being just obviously dumb it's it's very natural and i, I just love it Regardless of that, I'm going to have to cut a good, like, 25 minutes of this episode, but it'll be combined with, like, 40 minutes from the pre- Editing's going to be weird. You'll, you'll know. It'll be still a long episode. But, um, this was fun. Bad things are afoot. Things are never going to be okay. Like, we're just about through the end of every happy moment we're ever going to get in the game. And with that being said... Uh, if you stayed all the way to the end of the video, I just want to tell you thank you. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And I want to let you know that wherever you are, like where, wherever you are and whenever, whenever, you know, I can't even do my outro, dude. Please be sure to stay safe and take care out there. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Heaven's Feel where we tackle day 12. So I can only imagine we'll tackle the whole day in one episode, providing it's not a five hour long day. So, uh, my recording sessions should go back to normal because they've been weird. Usually I record a day per recording session, but things have been kind of off. So hopefully I can get back to that. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'll see you guys later for more Heaven's Feel. If you guys are excited to see me embark on this path of just absolute craziness, then keep enjoying. See you guys next time. Thank you for watching.